What is up, everybody? I'm your host of Running and Stave, and we have a few things to go over today, so hit like, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. To start things off, the EU placed sanctions on Iran for providing drones to Russia, which have been used in their strikes on Ukraine. This solidifies what many of us have known for a while. Iran and much of the Middle East is going to side with Russia in this conflict. I'm going to ask the I will be to, to, to answer the question. The issue of the use of drones by Russia, allegedly supplied by Iran in the war in Ukraine, had been also considered by the ministers. And certainly, Minister Kuleba, during his speech to the ministers, and strongly expressed <coughs> his concern, and he denounced the use of this kind of arms. Next, China told its citizens who may be in Ukraine to evacuate immediately. This comes after multiple escalations in the region and has some people worried this is a sign that tactical nukes may be used soon. Russia and China are obviously allies, so it wouldn't be crazy if Putin gave Xi a heads up to get their people out beforehand. Our next subject is very interesting, and I'd like to hear your all's opinion on it. Biden gave Americans working for chip manufacturers in China an ultimatum. Quit your job or lose your citizenship. Let's talk about U.S.-China tech war, and in the war between U.S. and China on technology, the casualty is not just the business and businessmen. Executives at these firms, they are also the ones at the receiving end. Many of the U.S. citizens at Chinese chip firms, they have been caught in the middle of tech war now. This after Washington's latest export restrictions that stop U.S. persons from supporting development or manufacturing of chips at targeted Chinese firms. The move caused mass resignation in Chinese tech firms. Many say it actually crippled the industry. At first I was like, well damn, this was actually a really good call by whoever tells Biden what to do. But then this article from The Guardian and several others like it said China is now moving faster to take Taiwan. If they do this, they will be able to shrug off Biden's latest sanction. So I thought this was a good move at first, but looking in hindsight, it seems like it probably is just going to speed up China taking Taiwan, creating another conflict that we really don't have the resources to fight right now given how spread thin we are. But let me know what you all think about this one. Was it still a good move to cripple the market even if it's short-lived and speeds up conflict, or is that even how you think it would shake out? Uh, let me know in the comments. Lastly, Russia has declared martial law in the newly annexed regions, giving leaders there increased power to do a wide range of things from searching any vehicle, home, or person they like, more central power over the media, no protests are allowed, and all this seems to just be trying to obviously cement their control of the region. This paired with China telling their folks to get out of Ukraine has many on high alert. Putin's mobilization of 300,000 reservists is complete. Tests of his nuclear torpedoes went well, and now the sub carrying them has surfaced near NATO borders. He made clear any attacks inside Russia's borders will be met with increased violence, and since there have been a few attacks, it makes sense that things are about to escalate again. I can't see in the future, but just looking at all the pieces and where they're placed on the board, I would guess that, best case scenario, Putin is about to unleash small tactical nukes on key targets, Worst case scenario, he may put the Poseidon nuclear torpedoes to use on a coastal city. Of course, I could be wrong, and I hope I am. This could just continue to be what we're seeing now. Drone strikes, cruise missiles, destroying each other's infrastructure. Uh, it's not a good situation, but at least there won't be nuclear fallout. Between the many, many missile strikes, declaring martial law, and naming Armageddon, the man in charge of violence, Putin has definitely ramped things up in the past few weeks. Again, from an inexperienced civilian, it really seems like Putin is ready for the long haul and has, unfortunately for us, positioned himself pretty well right before the ground freezes, which is when nobody in their right mind really wants to fight them. And while they've positioned themselves pretty well with plenty of energy, weapons, soldiers, allies, and stockpiles of gold and silver, the EU struggles to heat their homes placing them in a dangerous and precarious position right before a very cold winter. If you follow this channel, you know a lot of people in France and the Czech Republic are protesting not just the war, but also their membership in the EU and NATO. ...have gripped France as the country grapples with the cost of living crisis. The protests come amid a strike by union workers at France's petroleum refineries. 
A massive crowd of protesters marched through the center of Paris on Saturday demanding that France radically change its stance on NATO and the EU, international media reported. The protesters have also called for the designation of the country's president Emmanuel Macron. The demonstration reflects similar rallies being held across Europe in opposition to their respective government's support for the war in Ukraine. The constant supply of arms by mainly NATO members has prolonged the conflict in Eastern Europe, leading to the suffering of civilians caught up in the crossfire. The march was organized by the right wing Les Patriotes, the Patriots Party, led by Florian Philippot, the former deputy head of Marine Le Pen's national rally. Dubbed the National Meeting of Resistance, the march attracted thousands of large banners reading Resistance and smaller placards that read Frexit, a reference to a demand that France leaves the EU. Many protesters were also waving the national flag. According to videos published by Philippot on social media, the crowd was chanting, let's go out of NATO. They also demanded the ouster of the French President Emmanuel Macron as they marched near the parliament building, the footage purports to show. The protesters denounced NATO war mongering as well as economic disruption and energy and health restrictions linked to the sanctions the EU imposed on Russia over the conflict in Ukraine. French officials have not commented on the rally and provided no official figures as to the number of demonstrators. The French media mostly ignored the event as well. According to the website of Les Patriots, similar rallies were also held on September 3rd and 17th. So things are getting spicy all over the world. If you aren't aware of what's happening in Ethiopia, I recommend just Googling it. Uh, we have multiple proxy wars happening, so don't get too focused on a single one. They're all vital. Anyway, that's it for this one. Uh, let me know in the comments what you all think is going on, what you think is going to happen, and what you think I should cover next. And I will see you all next time.